Start recording. Okay, I don't see. Okay, we are recording. Yay! Now, wouldn't that have been a whole lot simpler if I to you to set this up for me? I'm not. I'm not putting up with this. They don't have it fixed by next Monday. We're gonna have class virtually. This is ridiculous. All right, so everybody's going to look. Now see, this whole setup right here that y'all see, that's not the setup that I have at home. And I don't know where. Maybe that's it right here. No. There is somewhere on here that you can set up the, the gallery to where you can see 12 or 15 people. I'm not going. I'm not going to download anything. I'm just going to. I'm going to get through this class today, and I don't know what we're going to meet next week. But we might meet downstairs in AC 137, or we may meet virtually. I'll let you know Saturday, Friday, after I figure out if they if they fix this because it's not. Yeah, I installed the whole thing. You didn't install the app. You're using it online. You have to install the app. Well, at my home, it's online. I mean, it's the same way I installed it, just like I did at home. I don't understand why it's doing two different things. But anyway, summarizing data in tables and graphs. And see, this is wrong because I can't use the whiteboard. They can't see the whiteboard. So... Hold on just a second. I'm going to change something. Okay, y'all should be able to see my big screen now. And I'm going to try to put this over on the other screen. I see it. And it's supposed to... When I hit, when I hit from current slide, it's supposed to do, and it's not. And I'm supposed to go to slideshow, and it's supposed to ask me, and it's not. So, okay, I, I know when I'm defeated, so I'm just going to pull up the whiteboard on this side and ask y'all if y'all can see the whiteboard. I can see the slides. Well, I don't know which slide that is right now. <clears throat> whiteboard. Okay, do you see a whiteboard? Yes. Do you see? Okay. This ain't the right whiteboard. That's it. That's it. I'm not, we're not, we're going to finish today. And we're either meeting in 137 if I can get 10 people here, or we're meeting virtually. I'm not, I'm not going to put up with this. That's not even the right whiteboard. And I can't. Okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pull the PowerPoint up, and you're just gonna have to watch it like this because I can't get, I can't be IT and the teacher, so we're just gonna go with this. Um, we're gonna be talking about frequency distributions. We're gonna be talking about qualitative and quantitative frequency distributions. And I can't write on the board on this class, so we're just gonna have to do the best we can. Um, a frequency distribution has a list on one side and a head count on the other. Now, a lot of this is elementary to y'all, except for the students that's never had probability and statistics before. Okay. And I forgot my drink downstairs. I'll just tell you. All right. So let me go ahead and get to a frequency distribution so you can see it. What did you say? Air distribution has a list. 
a list on one side and a head count on the other. This is a frequency distribution. And on this side, you have brown, yellow, red, orange, blue, and green. Now, I also went over this in my 103 class today. And that class down there, that's the classroom I've been working in for the last three years. They put a new computer in it, and it's not right. Okay, it's been good the last three years, but now that they mess with it, you know, there's a saying in real life, if it ain't broke, don't what? Huh? Don't fix it. That that room downstairs has been running good for three years. They should have left it alone unless they knew how to fix it. But anyway, they put in a new computer, and now it's only 90%. It's not working at 100% right. It's a whole lot better in this room. The whole point is, if you want to watch the 103 class, I will load it this afternoon or this evening. You can watch the 103 class today, and it will go over the same stuff. So anyway, what type, and I want you to write this down, what type of frequency distribution is this? It says it at the top. Qualitative. Why is it qualitative? Please mute your microphones, please. Why Sorry. is it qualitative? Let's what was the question? Up. Why is it qualitative? Because they're colors. Because they're colors, exactly. Qualitative data, and I want you to put over the word color, I want you to put categories. And that's how you tell the difference between a frequency distribution, qualitative, and quantitative. A qualitative will have categories, brown, yellow, red, orange, blue, green. This blonde brunette's redhead. This is a test question and a standardized test question. What type of frequency distribution is this? And you have two choices, qualitative and quantitative. This is qualitative because blondes, brunettes, and redheads. Somebody give me the average of brown, yellow, red, orange, blue, and green. You can't. If you can't take the average of it, then it's a category, then it is qualitative. Frequency is a 25 cent word for head count. If you add the frequency up, what do you get? The total that's in the class or the total that's in the back package. Now, if you will look at this question, this is your project. Oops. I think that's it. Yeah. The data on the next slides represent the color of M&Ms in a bag of plain M&Ms. Now in your project, it asks you to find these little packages, you know, like the ones that go in lunch boxes. Yes, this means yes, this means no. All right. The, find you get I would get some Halloween candy, you know, that comes in, you know, it's not Halloween. But you know the packages that have little packages M and M's in it. That's or Skittles, something that has different colors or different shapes. Pick ten of them. I don't know what the project says. Don't really care. I don't care how many you pick, but pick more than five and count each one as red, yellow, green, or uh, triangle shape or square shape or whatever. If you pick shapes and cookies, that's fine. If you pick colors with M and M's or Skittles, that's fine. And then do 10 bags and then count how many are red, how many are blue, how many are green, how many are brown, how many are triangle, how many are, do that, and that's your data. And then the rest of the project is based on that data. Okay, so that's what they're doing here. Construct a frequency distribution of the limoniums. And there's the count, and there's the frequency distribution. That's it. That's that's basically what a frequency distribution is. Now, the next thing they're going to do is say a relative frequency. I hate this because this is where I'd be on the whiteboard, right? Okay, a frequency distribution is a 25 cent word for what? Percentage. Write that down. A relative frequency, 
relative frequency is a 25 cent word or percent. You take the head count and divide by N. Take the head count and divide by N. Well, what is N? Well, let's go back to the previous slide. 12 plus 10 is 22. 22 plus 9 is 31. 31 plus 6 is 37. 37 plus 3 is 40. 40 plus 5 is 45. So 45, if I had something to write with, 45 would equal N. N is equal to 45. I don't get it. What? I don't get it. What do you not get? You got to tell me what you don't get. What do you not get? I don't understand <clears throat> what you're talking about. Like when you just now said something about 45 or. Add those numbers up in the frequency. Add oh, them up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the end. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going fast and I'm not writing and it drives me bananas. You know how I teach. I don't teach like this. Um, just add those up. And the summation, the summation of all your frequencies is equal to the head count, or the total head count, which is called N. Why did that person part like that? Or is he just getting something out of that car? I hope he's getting something out of that car because if he parks like that, that's, that's what? Oh, I was fixing to say, I hope he's not parked like that. Is he in this class or another class? He's in a Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. So anyway, I'm sorry, people at home. We're just discussing stuff outside the window here. All right. So it's interesting to see stuff out here. We actually had somebody uh, last semester race through the parking lot. Yeah, and of course, no, they were just racing as fast as they could down through there. And of course, security went out there, and I don't know what happened, but acting like idiots, so thinking this is high school or something. All right, so anyway, that's relative frequency. Relative frequency is the number. So let's do, let's do, I want you to add this, add a column right beside frequency in your notes. Add a column right here. That's what I would be doing. Let's see if they do that in the next page. Yeah, there it is. No. There it is. Add a column right here and call it relative frequency and then put above relative frequency, put a percentage symbol because that's all you're finding. Finding the percent. And 12 divided by 45, 10 divided by 45, Nine divided by 45, write this in your notes where they don't have it right here because you're going to forget. 12 divided by 45, 10 divided by 45, nine divided by 45, six divided by 45, three divided by 45. And that is your relative frequencies, which is a 25 cent word for percent. A lot of times in Math 120, probability of statistics, you're going to find that they name stuff and rename stuff just to sound important. One, my 103 book actually says relative frequency can sometimes be called percent. Well, then why don't you call it percent instead of relative frequency? I'm sorry. I guess I'm just old fashioned. I don't know why people just don't talk plain. All right. So that's a percent. So everybody got those down? No. Okay. 12 over 45, 10 over 45, 9 over 45, 6 over 45, and 3 over 45. And 45 is in. That's your total from getting... 12 plus 10 plus 9 plus 6 plus 
Um, Mr. Hubert, what's N, the answer or the <laughs> frequency number over the 45? That point two six six seven. Uh huh. Now some people, uh, some some uh, some tests or homework questions or whatever may ask you to write it as a fraction. Some may ask you to write it as a decimal. And of course, if you wrote it as a as a fra as a percentage, it would be twenty six point six seven percent. So they may ask you to write it as a fraction. They may ask you to write it as a decimal. They may ask you to write it as a percent. And that's just play on numbers. It's either going to be 12 over 45 or 0.2667 or 26.67%. Does that answer your question, Ms. Dennis? Yeah. What was your question? Was it there another what? Another Yeah. Like the other side. Yeah, the other side. There probably was. They just left it out. Okay. Ten, nine, six, three, five. Ten. <laughs> Did that yeah, they took brown out, didn't they? Okay. Uh, people at home, the uh, the slide. The person that did the slides evidently just didn't like green and uh, left it out. So that's not my fault. That's Pearson's problem. Okay, just put green down here. And green would be 5 over 45. And somebody tell me what that would be. Four digits, please. 5 over 45. That's one ninth and one tenth. It's going to be around point zero. It's going to be around point one. What is it? Point one one repeating. Thank you. Point one one repeating. So write that down and add green down here and five, and that would be five over forty five, which is equal to point one 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 or eleven point one one percent. I'm not even going to ask. Ms. Dennis, is that your phone? Is she frozen? It's the job phone. I wouldn't doubt it. It looks like I she's frozen. She's, she's not moving. So. I'm moving. No, over here. Hear it. Hear it. Brooklyn, old fashioned Tri County Tech. You're. I ain't, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm, I'm we'll just wait. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to say, I'm not coming back until the stuff is fixed. I'm, I'm going to tell them downstairs. I said, I'm not coming back. This is ridiculous. All right, next. A bar graph. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the different graphs. All right, the reason is because most of you have had 12 years of school and being able to see a graph and read a graph, most of you should have been get the, you, you, you have a prerequisite of having pre-algebra and algebra one before you get into this class. Most of you have seen bar graphs and pie graphs. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. All right. I don't want to. I don't you want to. Uh, email. There is a bar graph. So make a note. That's a bar graph. Now, how do you how are you able to read it? You got to be able to read that there's 12, there's 10, there's nine, there's six, there's three and five. You got to be able to read that bar graph. And that is a test question on my test and a standardized test. You got to be able to read where that bar graph hits a line or is in the middle of a line. So there's 12 browns, there's 10 yellow, there's nine red, there's six orange, there's three blue, and there's five green. I'm glad they didn't chop off the greens in this one. So you should be able to read and add those up and get 45, of course. 
So on a bar graph, what should you be able to do? You should be able to read the numbers and add them up and get in. So make sure you're frozen again, Miss uh, Dennis. See, so she's frozen. I have a quick question. Okay. I don't know um, who you are. Let me, let me go. Hold on. This is Mr. Mike Michelle. Yes, yes sir. sir. So is N the relative frequency? No, 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 no. N is the total head count in the bag of M&Ms. Okay, I see. You use N, N is the denominator in your relative frequency. Okay, that makes sense. Thank he you. Switched. When the voice activated, it switched him to the main screen. If you had the whole screen, the nine, and then the bottom, it would just light up the border around. So this is a totally different, I don't know what's going on here. It's driving me crazy. I'm, I'm not OCD on many things, but I'm OCD when it comes to things working in the classroom. And y'all just don't know how much this bothers me. Next. All right, there's our, okay, I don't understand why we're looking at that again. Okay, they're putting in the relative frequency. They're going to do a chart by relative frequency. So here's your chart. Here's your rel relative frequencies. They added green on this one. There's your relative frequencies, and now they're going to graph them. Now, these are a little bit more difficult to read because you can't, you got to interpolate right here. And please let me, let me, let me talk to you about courtesies again in the classroom. What should you not be doing in the classroom? Texting, okay? That will get on a teacher's nerve more than anything. All right? Please don't do that. All right. So, point two, I don't know, two eight. That looks like two eight or two six. Uh, point two two, point two three. I'm sorry, 0 0.27, 0 0.23. I don't know. This looks like 0 0.2. That's 0 0.13. Uh, 0 0.067. And this looks like 0.12. You got to learn to be able to interpolate. Interpret, interpolate's a word. Y'all don't know if it's a word. I'm not misconstruing it. It's when you find something between two parameters and you try to guesstimate it. Okay? So you got to guesstimate here. I'm not going to ask you that on a test, but I will ask you that first one. Uh, let's see. Okay, write down a Pareto chart. Not for me, but for a standardized test. A Pareto chart is in order from decreasing to increasing. Okay, or I'm sorry, decreasing order. From, from increasing to decreasing, it goes in decreasing order. And you might want to write that down because that might be on a standardized test. I'm not going to test you on it, but you might see it on a standardized test. And here is the M&Ms with a Pareto chart. And again, they're using the percentages, so it just goes goes straight down like that. That is a Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is in decreasing order. It's full hall. It's not here. Eight ball speaking. A side by side chart. Now I'm going to tell you right now. Go ahead and write down side by side and just draw a picture of it because it's only used use it in business a lot. Uh, let me go down here and show you uh, just side by side, side by side chart. And here is the data. Usually when you're using two years. 
like how much profit did we make in 1990? How much profit did we make in 2020? And this is what it looks like, side by side. Now that's pretty simple because it's a bar chart. Instead of four lines or four bar, uh, bars, it's got eight. 1990, 2006. 1990, 2006. Now, all of this can be found in your textbook. So if you want to open up your textbook and just mark these, highlight them, you can do that. Um, I just suggest that you, you know, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these because we're only talking about one or two questions out of 20 on a test. And on standardized tests, you just got to be able to look at them and know what they are. This is a side by side. You got two categories side by side. 1990 and 2006. Gmail. I'm giving y'all a second to write it down. I was making sure I wasn't fired. Checking my email, make sure I ain't fired. I probably will be fired after I go downstairs. Okay, y'all got that one? Miss Dennis, you're still frozen. And what decides, why does it decide that Miss Dennis is the only one that's supposed to be on there? That's I mean, only you screen. Maybe, maybe she, uh, maybe she's special. But she's frozen right now. Can you hear me though? I can hear you, but you're frozen. You got your hand in front of your face. No, I don't. Holding your pencil. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We're uh we're just behind you in time. Oh. And County Tech is behind the times in more ways than one. <laughs> Horizontal. That's a side by side, only it's top and bottom. So Again, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by, you know, making you write that down unless you just, you know, don't know. And you're welcome to take a minute or two and make a note of that. Um, that's why I tell you all to read chapters one and two, because I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence by going over a top and bottom chart. Um, are you going to use this in this class? No. So, but you need to be familiar with it so you can read it. Okay, in 1990, there were 0.25 graduates, 25% were not high school graduates, where in 2013, it looks like 12% were high school graduates. Or whatever that's up there, high school diploma, 30%, uh, that stayed about the same. Some college, no degree, uh, that was uh, about 18%. In 1990, it dropped to about 16% in 2013. Associate's degree went up. Bachelor's degree went up. Graduate went up. And that is 1990 through 2000, or comparing 1990 with 2013. Next. Will this be on my test? Yes. Will it be on a standardized test? Yes. Somebody tell me what's the first thing you should look for in a pie chart. Huh? The legend? No. Anybody? She said legend, and that is important, but it's not the first it's thing. Equals one hundred percent. Exactly. All the percentages should equal what? One hundred percent. 
Will standardized test or my test put up one that's not 100%? Yes, and you should catch it. So make sure you write that down, all right? Question, gripe, complaint. Make sure that all of this, all these percentages add up to be 100%. If it's not 100%, it's not valid. It's not a valid graph. Capish? Capish. I'm looking to see what's next. I'm sorry, it's jumping all over the place. Uh, da, 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 Okay, what is the difference between quantitative, qualitative, and quantitative? Well, on the left here, instead of categories, you got classes, write down classes, or bins, B-I-N-S, classes or bins, B-I-N-S. In a quantitative, in quantitative data, you're going to have classes or bins. Classes or bins. So above the number of cars, I want you to write down classes slash bins. First bin is zero, or the first class is zero. The second class is one. Third class is two. Usually the classes are a gap, like age gaps from 20 to 24, from 25 to 29, from 30 to 34. Those are classes. And then these are bins because they don't have a spread. So they're kind of like boxes. They're bins. B-I-N-S. And you treat them just like you do a regular... If you want the frequency, add up the frequency, then that's N, as in November, that's N, is equal to 50. And then you find your relative frequencies. And that will be a homework question, a test question, and a standardized test question. Find the relative frequency. And where do we get 50? 50 is to add up all the frequency, that's N. N is equal. 50. I would usually write n is equal to 50 right here, but I can't. So, I have a quick question. So, this is an example of quantitative frequency, right? Yeah, quantitative. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now it's saying, now it's letting me do the primary monitor. Which I'm not going to switch it right now. I will try one thing right quick. Hold on a second, people. I'm going to try one more thing. I know class will be over and some of y'all are going to, well, class is going to be over in three minutes, I think, right? So I'll just keep going. Okay, now this is one of the biggest, I don't know what you, jokes of statistics. Does anybody know the difference between a histogram and a bar chart? The histogram touch, whoever said that. The histogram's touch. Okay, there is no mathematical difference between a bar chart and a histogram. There is no difference in the widths of the there is a histogram. All right. There's no mathematical difference between a histogram and a bar chart. Like I told the last class, 103, sometimes I believe um, shut up, Hubert. Um, when you can't make it as one, you drop down to the second level and you compete there, all right? Well, I believe somewhere down in history, there was a mathematician who wanted to be a mathematician 
but he or she could not make it, so they started a new math called statics, statistics. And they started renaming everything different names, and they meant the same thing in, in math. You know what I'm saying? So, for instance, a table is called a frequency distribution. And a head count is called a frequency. And a bar chart is now called a histogram. They rename things, and there's no difference between the first name and the second name. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. And I'm, and I'm sorry, uh, cumulative frequency. There's no purpose for the cumulative frequency, but they have them in this book, or they have them in the 103 book. There's just some things that I'm like, really? Really? The only difference between a histogram and a bar chart is the boxes touch. That's it. So, you know, I don't know why they even have it. Why do they even have a histogram? Why, what's the purpose of a histogram? Yes. So you can easily see, like, you got a whiteboard. I draw it. But you can, like, see my notes. Like, you can see how the data, like, flows. Yeah. Like, one well, you can do that with a bar chart. Go back up to the bar chart. You can do that with a bar chart. Well, not a side by side. Yeah. You can see how it goes right there. I mean, honestly, I just, I guess, I guess that's probably the only thing I could see is what you just said. She said that you can actually see the curve a little bit better. Yeah, you can actually see the curve a little bit better. We're going to put that down as the purpose for the histogram because I can't, in all the years that I've taught, I've never seen an example of a bar chart and a histogram actually hurting each other. They're the same thing. Okay. Okay, before y'all start having convulsions, I'm going to end it right there. Put down 2.2, number, we're on number, what were we, 17, slide 17. 2.2, slide 17, and let me go ahead and, before y'all have convulsions, some of y'all are trying to run out of here. No, you go ahead. Well, let me call the roll if I can on this thing. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm keeping you behind. I'm sorry. TCTC.edu. If I didn't have to do some of the things that I had to do on here, I would we would already be done. Let me turn the oh my gosh, I can't even find the teams present and shut off the recording.